So our theme today is connected with the fifth chakra. And um, the fifth chakra is a chakra which is free from the rest of the body. It's, um, it's at the throat, but we could also assign it to really this region of the collarbone and the very, very top part of the spine. And what this um, chakra represents when it develops is a way of stepping out of our um, past impressions, our way, our subjective way of perceiving the world that is based on our past memories. So we will always inevitably go into some activity or so something that we're looking at and seeing and thinking about with preconceived ideas. And yoga is, um, yoga offers us um, ways of trying to step out of these preconceived ideas and really just to perceive something as if we are perceiving it for the first time, free of our, any sort of previous coloring or, or conditioning. It sounds like uh, some people would argue that it's it's an impossibility, but I think what we can do is um, try and and really just be attentive in the moment and and start to notice the difference between whether we're um, seeing um, perceiving our own bodies or the the room or the, the the position that we're doing, whether we're going into it with past memories or whether we're actually feeling it as if it's the first time. So one thing that we can do to um, help ourselves do that is to observe a, a specific um, part of the body or a specific form with a particular thought. We need to guide our awareness in a particular way to stop these past impressions automatically coming in and coloring the way that we see things. So we have, as you will all be familiar with, um, certain specific thoughts or mental pictures that I will always offer you to think while you're doing the position, unlike some forms of exercise that it's just about doing. With this particular approach to yoga, it's always about what do we think while we're doing the exercise. And this is something that can help us to leave behind our automatic thoughts, our automatic um, patterns of, of thinking and awareness, and to perceive something in a, a new way. So the thoughts that I'm going to um, give you to think this evening are going to be mainly connected with this shoulder region. And I think this can also be of great physical benefit because so many of us carry a lot of tension in our shoulders. It's always the place where thing, tensions gather. And we can, I know for myself, I find myself holding this tension in my shoulders without even being aware of it. So the shoulder area is an area that separates the head from the physical body. And we can take this thought, we can think this thought in quite a lot of different exercises. We can become aware of this almost kind of dividing line. And in doing that, we can leave the head more free and we can work with the body in whatever way corresponds to the particular exercise that we're doing. So that's going to be a recurring thought that's going to come. We'll do quite a lot of exercises that literally will help to work through the shoulder region, stretch it out in different ways. And we'll also work with this conscious thought. Here is a shoulder girdle and the head above is free. The body underneath is doing something. Um, not all the exercises will have that thought. And we'll, I'll keep coming back to this idea of um, free perception. What is a, a, a particular, well, to use Heinz Grill's words, he says, what is free sensory perception? That's our main, our main question that we can keep in mind. What is free sens sensory perception? So I'd like to start with an exercise called the earth. It's done in a standing position. 
So for this exercise, we can start with a particular thought that our body becomes subject to the forces of gravity. We're going to keep the legs standing like a sort of firm pedestal, but the whole of the rest of the body from um, the hips upwards are going to just, body's gonna hang down just as if it's a, a dead weight, a physical object that's subject to the forces of gravity. That's the thought that you can think while you do this exercise. We've done it many times before, just hanging forwards, but we're going to hold it for longer than usual this time. And we'll do it a few times as well. So you can stand with your feet firmly on the ground, the legs firm and stable from the hips upwards. We're just going to roll down and hang. Letting the breath flow. And we're going to stay with this thought. The body is like a dead weight. It's subject to the forces of gravity. We stay with a specific thought so that the other automatic thoughts can receive, recede. We bring a new thought in. The body is subject to the forces of gravity. And then you can just freely and lightly come back up to the standing half moon, just very gently opening up, letting the breath flow and take the hands down. We'll do this exercise a couple more times. One of the effects that it can have is to help the whole upper body start to feel much freer, especially afterwards. Let's do it once again. Feet and legs are firm. You're going to take a specific thought and, and you'll notice as you do this, other thoughts will tend to kind of filter, um, infiltrate. But by staying with this one chosen thought, the body is subject to the forces of gravity. We can notice how gradually the other thoughts can become less dominant. Feet and legs are firm. We take the body down. You can be aware of the breath. And we take our chosen thought. The body is subject to the forces of gravity. It just hangs like a dead weight Stay with that thought. We allow that thought to guide the awareness, to determine the awareness that we have of the body. The body is subject to the forces of gravity. Now you can just let the body flow lightly and freely up into the standing position again. As if it now rises up against gravity. Keep the breath free. Take the hands gently down. Be aware of the breath coming and going. This exercise can help our body feel much freer afterwards, but also you might notice that your mind gradually, as we do the more and more positions, starts to also feel a bit freer and clearer with less clutter by taking one chosen thought and staying with that thought or that mental picture. 
the other busyness and clutter can gradually recede. Let's do it one more time. Rolling down. Being aware of the firm feet and legs to start with, like your pedestal. And then from the hips through the rest of the body, the upper body, shoulders, the arms, the neck and head and face. Everything is just hanging like a dead weight. Drawn down by gravity. The body is subject to the forces of gravity. And then a free movement, wafting right up as if you're floating up away from gravity. Now the opposite, free breathing, really high and free and open. And take the hands down by your sides. So we'll do a variation that now addresses this shoulder region more. And this is to, you take your hands behind your back like this. If you've got more flexible shoulders, you can even twist the hands outwards. But if you can't do that, then just keep them um, in the normal clasp position. So this position goes like this, I'll just show you. So you can feel the shoulder area being worked through. Just let your breath flow. Try and keep the head more free. Okay, so take the hands clasped behind your back. If you are able to twist them, it's it's not, um, it was, it, you have to twist it so that your little fingers come up and your palms go down, but some people can't, most people aren't able to do that actually. So then let's come down, letting your shoulders and your arms hang as far as possible over your head. Shoulder blades should be squeezed together as much as possible. So that extra twisting of your hands helps bring the shoulders towards each other. They shouldn't be twisted in a way that your shoulders go away from each other. The twisting of your arms should be done in such a way that it brings the shoulder blades further towards each other. And then just lower your hands and come back up to a standing position. Okay, so we're going to do the sun prayer. There's a couple of um, positions in the sun prayer that I'm going to particularly emphasize, positions that emphasize this shoulder region here. And those ones are, I'll just show you before we do the whole cycle, we're going to emphasize this one here the knee, the chest and the forehead on the ground. When we do come to that position, again, you can feel as if there's a kind of squeezing of your shoulder blades towards each other. And the other one that we'll emphasize, so we'll hold both of these for a little bit longer, is the downward dog. And in that one, you can, as well as lengthening your legs, you can bring the chest right towards the knees. So we'll take, we'll keep our awareness at that region between the shoulder blades. Come up to a standing position and take your hands together. 
Just keep the breath free and keep the head free. As we come up, you can picture a lifting of your breastbone upwards, this upper region. Then take the hands down and look downwards towards the ground. Take your right foot back. Make a bowl with your legs. Let's think of this breastbone region drawing up as you come into the half moon. And then come into the plank. Firm line. Just have your neck lengthening forwards, the back of your neck. Take the knees down. Now this is where we can focus on tween as you take your face down, really drawing the shoulder blades as a, a contraction almost in your upper spine. And then slide forwards and open into the cobra. Breath flowing. And then push into downward dog. So we can have a good length through the legs. And now you could also think of your chest moving towards the knees. And take the right foot forward. Think of that pulling up from with the breastbone. So your breastbone is lifted up high. And then take the other foot forward. Look down. And then come right the way up. Let's again think from the breastbone, a raising and a drawing upwards and take the hands by your sides. So I didn't explain this breastbone thought before we started. You can picture in all of these lifting movements that you're being drawn upwards from that breastbone area there, like this, that movement you can picture so that when we do the half moon and the standing half moon, it's if your breastbone is really drawn up into a, a raising movement. So this whole upper region of the body is very much addressed, the very upper part of the spine. Let's do it with the other foot coming back again now. Hands together. Take the arms up. Then you can picture a lifting from the breastbone right the way up. And then take the hands down, look downwards towards the ground. Take the left foot back. Make a good bowl with your legs. Take the arms up and once again, lift up the breastbone, drawing upwards. Then take the hands down and make a plank and think of your neck being long, the back of your neck being long as if your whole body is drawn into this good plank. Now take the knees down. Knees, chest and forehead to the ground and really lengthen the upper part of the spine as if it's um, almost contracting between the shoulder blades. Slide forwards and come into the cobra. into the downward dog, the length through the legs, and now we can picture that movement of the chest moving towards the knees. In doing that, it also will help the shoulder area to stretch out. Chest draws towards the knees. Take the left foot forward, form a bowl with the legs. Take the arms up. Breathing. And now let's think of that breastbone thought being drawn upwards. Take the hands down. Take the other foot forward, looking down. Come right the way up. Breathing. Breastbone is lifted. 
streaming up and take the hands by your sides. Okay, let's do that um, position once again. We'll maybe speed it up a, a tiny bit this time, but let's stay with this idea that we're lifting from the breastbone and also this gathering in certain movements between the shoulder blades. Hands together. Taking the arms up and lifting from the breastbone, streaming up, and then taking the hands down and looking down. Take the right foot back. Take the arms up, good base with the legs, lifting with the breastbone, streaming up. And then coming into the plank, good long line, long neck, knees, chest and forehead to the ground. Let's be consciously aware of the region between the shoulder blades. And then slide forwards and come into the cobra, good opening. Push into the downward dog. Let's again hold this one a little bit longer. Legs are long. Let's be aware of that chest moving towards the knees. And take the right foot forward. Form a good base with your legs. Take the arms up. Now the thinking can come to the breastbone, lifting up. And then take the other foot forward, but down towards the ground. Come right the way up. Once again, the breastbone lifts. You can picture that movement, the breastbone being drawn upwards towards the ceiling. And take the hands down. Once again, hands together. Arms coming up, the breastbone can be lifted and drawn up, you flow right up. Take the hands down, look down towards the ground, being drawn downwards. Left foot back, form a base with the legs. Take the arms up. Think of that breastbone again, it's drawn upwards. And then Come into the plank, firm line. Let's hold the plank a bit longer. Really good strengthening one. Sometimes it can be really good to hold that for a bit of time. You can feel how, if we're thinking about the shoulders today, that the shoulders will really be strengthened through doing this. But also what's helpful is to think of the back of your neck being really long, as if it's the body into a better length. Take the knees down now. Drop the forehead and the chest down. Really lengthening through your upper spine as your chest comes towards the floor. Hold it a little bit longer. Then slide forwards and up into the cobra. Push into the downward dog. Once again, long legs, chest drawn towards the knees. Take the left foot forward, forming the base with the legs. Take the arms up once again, breastbone, lifting up, the breastbone is drawn upwards. Take the hands down. Step forwards and look down towards the mat. Come right the way back up again. Growing, breathing, think of that breastbone. Right the way up and take the hands down. So we had a conscious thought of the breastbone, which could help us to grow in a different way 
from how we would automatically do it if we were just completely coloured by our automatic habits. So, um, I'd like to come to the shoulder stand and we're going to do various preparations for the shoulder stand, focusing again on the shoulder area and on how we can um, loosen it up. Let me just bring the camera a little bit closer. So let's start the first time. We'll start with the arms um, above the head. Now you can either come into it with your starting with in the usual way with your hands by your sides, or and, and then you take the arms up one at a time like that. Or if you're able to, you can start directly with the arms above the head, lift the legs and swing right up. That's a little bit more difficult. Let's just start in this position with an awareness of the head and the shoulder region. Okay, so you can come up when you're ready. Let the breath flow freely. Be aware of the shoulder girdle just resting on the ground. And also of the head just resting. So when we do the shoulder stand, we shouldn't put the neck under undue strain. Breath is left free. The back of the head and the shoulders and the arms just form a calm resting face. And then roll back down again. We'll come back up to a sitting position. So the, we're going to do various different movements that can help to loosen up the shoulders. And it would be very easy to think about this in a mechanical way, that if I stretch my arms in that way or in that way or in that way, through the mechanical stretching, um, the, it loosens up the shoulder region. And that certainly can be true, true. But if we want to work with our consciousness as well as the body, then what's important is that we guide our movements with specific thoughts and that we don't rush into the physical movement too quickly, but that we stay with the mental picture for long enough to then allow the body to respond to that picture. So the main thing that we're doing is we're guiding our awareness. We're focusing on the position with a specific thought and an idea which can help us to experience it in a new way. And that can actually have a, a be much more instrumental in freeing our shoulders than purely just the physical because a lot of the region, reason for shoulder tension is the fact that we ho we're holding on to too many ideas. So if we can really stay mentally with a certain picture and allow the old ideas to quieten down, that is one of the things that can really help bring um, a release in the shoulders. So the movement that we're going to do um, next is um, we can come up, we can start with the same movement we've just done. And the thought now is that the arms glide 
away from each other. One arm glides upwards and behind you, the other or above your head, the other glides away from you. It doesn't matter whether the arms don't really move very much at all. What's important is that you're thinking that idea of the arms gliding along the ground in opposite directions. And then you can change them around and do a similar thing. Okay, so if you'd like to do that when you're ready, you can come up into that initial shoulder stand position again. Breath flowing. And just whenever you feel stable enough, you can take one hand behind your back. And just stay with that idea. The arms glide away from each other on the ground. Changing your arms around whenever you are ready. And then take both hands behind your back and come back down and up into a sitting position. So when we do this exercise, when we're trying to let go of past colored impressions, one thing that's really important is that we leave our breath free. When we're holding on to past ideas, um, we also tend to hold on to our breath. When we can release these past um, habitual ways of looking at things, we also find that our breath quite naturally gains a kind of freer quality. As when we do the next movement, you can just try and be aware of this, be aware of what's happening to your breath. The movement now is with both arms together, um, flowing away from you on the ground. Now you can either just keep the hands resting on the ground or you can clasp the fingers. The thought is that the arms glide away from the body along the floor. It's not that we consciously push, try and push, but rather we stay with that thought. The arms are gliding right from the shoulder region away from the body along the floor. We stay with that thought. That's the main thing. The body will respond naturally. The breathing will also change naturally. So whenever you're ready, you can come into that position. Hands along the ground or else fingers interlocked. Make sure that you're aware of your breathing right from the outset. So you're not holding it. The breathing will, it might feel constricted in some parts of the body. It might feel freer in other parts of the body. Just stay with the thought. The arms glide away from the body along the floor. You're not pushing with the arms, you're thinking that thought. The arms glide away. The body will naturally respond to the thought that you're thinking. And the breathing too will change in accordance with your thought and with the movement.
and then come back down again and up into a sitting position. Okay, so finally we'll come to the actual shoulder stand itself. When we do the shoulder stand, we've got a base that's formed by the head and the shoulders and the upper arms. It's just a very calm resting base. The starting point for the movement upwards is the heart center and the body just flows naturally upwards. So that is the thought that we can think to ourselves from the heart center, the body flows naturally upwards. Quite naturally, the shoulders will arrange themselves down on the ground with this exercise as well. But our key task today is to stay with a chosen thought, a chosen mental picture, and not to let other preconceived um, ideas come in. We'll just stay with that picture out of the heart center. The body rises up into a line. So when you're ready, you can come into the actual shoulder stand. So the head, shoulders and upper arms will form a natural base. The heart forms the center. And now we stay with that chosen thought out of the heart center. Body flows up into a vertical line. The movement will happen quite naturally. By staying with one chosen thought, it keeps our awareness really in the moment letting old past thoughts recede. The body flows up out of the heart center into a vertical line. Come back down again. Let's come into a sitting position. Just be aware of your breathing. I talked about how when we stay with one particular thought and old thoughts can recede, the old tension in our breathing also recedes and we can feel a natural openness and freedom in our breath. So we're going to come next to the fish. In the fish, this shoulder girdle plays a really important role. The chest is very much opened out while the head drops back. And um, so the shoulder girdle forms a kind of dividing line between the two. And that's something we can really be aware of when we do the fish. We can be aware of this contrast between the very actively lift, lifted thoracic spine and chest and then the completely relaxed head that drops backwards. So would you like to come into the starting position for the fish, taking your arms right underneath your body, the palms side by side, straighten out your legs. And before you come into the position, Let's just become aware of this shoulder girdle with the collarbones that cross at the top of it. This region is going to be the dividing line between the open chest and the drop back head. 
And also we can become aware when we're in the position of the breathing in that collarbone region or just above it into the lung, lung tips that just go above the collarbone. So when you're ready, you can come up onto your elbows, right up high, lift up your rib cage, lift up your chest, and then drop the head back, lowering it down onto the ground. Chest is lifted, the head is relaxed. In between is the collarbone region. And come back down and relax again. So there's a more advanced variation of the fish, which will be all right for some of you if you feel you've got a really strong um, spine, if you're already well able to support yourself. If you're not so flexible in your spine, then it's not so good to do this because you can end up putting too much pressure on your neck. So this is a more advanced variation. I call it the extended fish. And I'll just show you this one. It's you come up, you have your hands this time starting on your, by your sides rather than underneath your body. Once again, in the same way as before, you lift your chest up really consciously, drop the head back. And then take the arms right up. So this again really works the shoulder area. You, you can think of that flowing, that streaming right through the arms. That's what you can picture this time. Otherwise, just continue with the ordinary fish. You can repeat the ordinary fish again. So for the ordinary fish, you take your hands underneath your body again. For the extended fish, you can take your hands by your sides. And then come up once again onto your elbows. And lift up your chest your rib cage on your chest, drop the head right back down to rest on the mat. And if you're doing the extended fish, you can picture that flowing line right through the arms to the fingertips. If you're doing the ordinary fish, you can once again be aware of the lifted chest and the relaxed head, that difference. In between is the collarbone region and the breath flows into the lung tips that extend beyond that region. And then relax down again. Okay, can you come up to a sitting position? So I'd like to come to the twisted head to knee position. 
We'll start first of all with um, the ordinary head to knee head to knee position over one leg. And um, for this one, you can either have your foot bent in to your thigh like this, or if you're more advanced, if you've got more bendy hips, you can take your foot right on top into your groin like this, so one or the other. Just having a good upright spine. If you're feeling strain on your knee in doing that, then just keep the foot down on the floor. Okay, so just take your the same arm as your bent leg behind your back. And take this other hand out in front of you like this. So what we can think of is that there is a difference. We are, our body is here and the hand is out there. We can think of that difference, body and hand. And as you move forwards, you can look outwards. The bending is coming from the hips. There's a contraction happening there. The movement happens right from the, the growth happens right from the sacrum at the base of the spine. That region is quite active. The hand is out ahead. It's really free. It's beyond. We'll stay with that picture. Come right the way forwards. And then return again. Let's change over to the other side. So the thought that we think is that on the one hand, we've got this fixedness down here. On the other hand, we've got that freedom ahead. So body is on the ground. The hand is beyond out in the space above, ahead of us. We start moving actively from the hips. Sacrum is the beginning. The hand is in the space beyond. Breath flowing. Right the way out, right the way forwards. And come back again. Let's repeat that exercise once again. This time we can eventually take the hand down onto the floor, but we'll just keep that sense of sliding forwards. We want to have the, the, this feeling of contrast, fixed um, or strong contraction, if you like here, gliding forwards with the hand, contraction and gliding forwards. So once again, one arm behind your back, the other arm facing out forwards. Contraction from the lower body, from the sacrum, gliding out forwards with the hand. Right the way out, breath flowing. Take the hand down onto the floor. Keep gliding forwards. Contraction or activity from the sacrum. Free gliding forward with the hand. And come back up again. Change your legs around. Take the other arm behind your back. Hand forward. Good active gliding forwards from the sacrum. The eyes looking out ahead at the hand. Keep moving forwards, always looking ahead. Take the hand down onto the floor. Continue to glide out, looking ahead always. Contraction at the sacrum, gliding forwards with the hand. and come back again. So when we come to the movement with the twist, again, we have these contrasts, these polar opposites. 
the legs are firmly on the ground, whereas now with our shoulder girdle, we're twisting and turning to look upwards so that the head eventually looks up at free space. The shoulder girdle will open itself and help to give us this division between what's on the ground underneath and this openness above. I'll just show you how this movement works. Again, we start with one hand behind the back. And again, we have this activity from the hip region and from the sacrum. But now we can think of twisting our shoulder girdle, the hand turns to face upwards. And we can now stay with our clear thought that we have the legs on the ground, the head looking upwards. The shoulder girdle is like that dividing barrier, almost like a line that goes from, from one shoulder to the other shoulder to the knee. Okay, so if you'd like to straighten out the first leg and take the opposite arm behind your back. Take your hand out in front once again. So the activity starts with the legs, the hips, the sacrum moving forwards. Now you can twist your shoulder girdle to open outwards, turn the hand to face upwards, turn your eyes to look upwards. And really with an active twist, you now open your shoulder girdle upwards. And in the position, you can stay with this thought, the legs remain on the ground, the head looks up into the openness. The shoulder girdle forms that line from one shoulder to the other shoulder, to the knee, in between the two. Breath flowing freely. And then straighten up once again. Let's change over to the other side. So take the bent, the side of the bent leg, take that arm behind your back. Straighten side, the hand comes right forwards. We start the movement with a bend from the hips. We can feel the legs well placed on the ground. We can feel the arm looking forwards. Now we twist our shoulder girdle, looking up above. Take the arm, the elbow down, hand facing upwards. Be aware of that line of your shoulder girdle between, from one shoulder to the other shoulder to your knee. Below it, the legs are rooted on the ground. Above it, the head looks up into the open space. Stay with that thought, legs on the ground, head looking into open space. Straighten up once again. Coming back into a sitting position. Just to remind you then, our, our main learning step for today is that if we stay with a specific thought for a yoga position, the other thoughts can more easily recede. And that helps us to experience the position as if it's the first time, as if it's a new experience, not something that we've just repeated again and again many times. So I want to finish off with one final exercise. And this is um, yoga mudra. But, so this one can be done either in a kneeling position or in um, cross-legged or lotus position. The kneeling position is easier. We're going to start 
um, once again with a, a variation, a preparatory variation that loosens up the shoulders. It's similar to what we did at the beginning when we um, did the standing head to knee position with the arms behind the back. I'll just show you this one. And it comes forwards like this. Okay, well, you can do that in Lotus if you prefer. So come into your um, starting position. Hands clasped behind your back. You can, again, if you want to twist the arms, uh, you get more, um, you can raise them easily. When you twist them, it's in the direction that your shoulders squeeze closer to each other. It's not twisting in the other direction that brings the shoulders forwards. It's twisting in the direction that brings the shoulders together, but only if you can, because a lot of people aren't able to do that twist. Let's start then with an awareness of the upright spine, just looking around you into the space, because as we bend forwards, we're going to come into <clears throat> a different orientation. We want to be conscious of that. First, we're looking outwards. Now you can come down bringing the arms up and experience yourself facing the earth. And then come back again. So the actual yoga mudra, again, can be done either kneeling or in lotus. I think you probably all know the position. I'll just demonstrate it. And then I'm going to tell you the thought that we're going to think when we do it. So the position um, is a very gentle bowing movement. And the thought that we're going to think as we do this movement, I'm going to quote um, to you from one of Heinz Grill's books. I just need to get my glasses a minute. So we've been talking today about free sensory perception. And in this position, he says, free sensory perception occurs when the body is placed down in front, completely relaxed, even with abandon, as if it were dead. Delightful thought, isn't it? But it's, it's a bit similar to what we were doing when we did that initial earth position and we imagined the body just being drawn down by gravity. I'm going to read it again. Free sensory perception occurs when the body is placed down in front, completely relaxed, even with abandon, as if it were dead. So I'll read that um, sentence to you um, while you're actually in the position. So you can just stay with that thought. So come into your starting position, body upright, breath free. And you can take the arms up above the head. Just be aware of your breathing. And then come forwards, taking the hands gently onto the ground, sliding them forwards and lowering either your forehead or your chin onto the ground. Keep the breath flowing. And so you can then stay with this thought. Free sensory perception occurs 
when the body is placed down in front, completely relaxed, even with abandon, as if it were dead. Free sensory perception occurs when the body is placed down in front, completely relaxed, even with abandon, as if it were dead. And then you can come back up to a sitting position again. We'll just pause for a moment. Aware of your breathing. So I mentioned how with free sensory perception, we can also feel that sense of a greater freedom in our breathing. We can notice that very often after the exercises, if not during them as well. Let's finish our session there. <laughs>